Hi. So in this last section of probability, we're going to do expected value. And expected value is very valuable in our world because it has a lot to do, even with gambling, um, a raffle ticket. We really, we don't, we like to take chances in gambling or raffle tickets or anything fun like that. Um, life insurance, that's a big one with expected value. But we want to see what can we expect? If I go ahead and put $5 on a roulette game, can I expect to win? Or how much can I expect to lose, right? Is it a fair game? Meaning the odds are just even on the both sides on the house and yourself and the consumer. Life insurance is a big thing, right? Because you pay for life insurance every month. It comes out of your paycheck and it's just to cover you just in case there was an accident of a death, right? And so, but you don't die every year, right? So, but you're paying every year for a policy. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how much of the expected value is for the consumer, meaning us as people and for companies and on the side of the company or the casino and things like that. You'll see most of the time things are formatted and structured in these companies and casinos in a way that the expected value is on is positive, right? It's on their side. They can always expect to win. Um, and unfortunately, we're expected to lose as people and consumers. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the the expected value is, in other words, the average gain or loss. So we could spec say instead of expected value, we say the average gain or loss is 50 cents or something. Um, all we have to do is find the probability for each outcome, multiply them and add them up. It's really easy. And then if the expected value is zero or really close to zero, that's a fair game. And that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. So because a lot of the expected values will not be fair game to us, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, look at the first example. A raffle ticket is purchased for $5 and we, they sell 2,000 tickets. And the prize is worth 4,000. So compute the expected value for this raffle. So the first thing we need to do is make a table. And we can make it so that there is a header and a header column where um, we have here whether you're going to win the raffle or lose the raffle, right? And then up here will be the the value, which is usually dollars, right? We usually use this with money because we want to, we like winning money. <laughs> and then this is the probability of winning that event. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. So if I'm the person buying the ticket, so I need it in, in perspective of me. So perspective um, is the person, the ticket holder. So that means the ticket holder will win uh, $4,000, right? And then, but they pay $5. So, so let's just take a look. So if I buy $5 raffle ticket, I hope I win, but I don't win. So if I don't win, then I just lost $5, right? So this will be minus $5. Now don't forget the minus because you did lose $5. You're out $5 out of your pocket. Why? Because it's in the perspective of you, the ticket holder. Okay. So you lost $5. But if you win, you win 4,000, right? But you don't really win 4,000, right? Because you win 4,000, but you paid $5 for your raffle. So really, you won, but you really, you didn't win all of it because you did put in $5, but you definitely made your money back, right? And that you won $3,995. So we just have to be careful of how much you put in. You have to deduct that from your winnings because that you really didn't win that $5 because you put that money in. So what's the probability of winning? Well, how many tickets are there? There are 2,000 tickets and there's only one winner, right? So that means that the winning ticket is one out of 2,000. 
which means there are 1,999 losing tickets out of the 2,000. So the expected value or the average gain or loss for the ticket holder, which I can only imagine it'll be a loss, right? <laughs> so the expected value is just equal to each of these values multiplied by its probability, and then we just add them together. So it'll be 3,995 times one out of 2,000 plus a minus five times 1,999 out of 2,000. Okay, I can just go ahead and put them in the calculator. So I'll put 3,995 9, 9, 3, 9, times one divided by 2,000 plus, and then we'll have a negative five times one nine 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 divided by 2,000. Negative three. Wow. So right when you buy it, you put the $5 in, you could automatically expect to lose $3. Whether you win or not, the expected loss is $3. So the negative represents, in our case, a loss. We don't say negative $3, we say loss. We could say the ticket holder can expect to lose $3 per ticket purchased. Okay, so we're going to find the actual expected value, which is fine, it's negative 3, but we want to look at it in terms of perspective. Is it the consumer and the people, or is it the company or casinos? In this case, the ticket holder can expect a loss, meaning that for the company, it's a, the latter, right? They expect a gain. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's try um, betting, a roulette. So you place roulette, and we're only gonna do one, one situation, and that's when you put um, on a number, and then the roulette game has 38 numbers on it. So if you place your bet on one number and it lands on that number, you get $175 and I think it's like 15 times or 25 times that or something. 30. And so you can bet um, $5, but if the metal lands on your number, you get 175. So your your bet multiplies because that's one, you know, one out of 38 chance you're it's gonna land on that number. So what is the expected value to the game uh, to the player, right? So to the player, so there's your perspective. To the player, so you playing. Okay, and so we can go ahead now, and then if we played a thousand times, how can we, what can we expect to lose? So let's go ahead and make a nice little table once again. and um, do the headers like this. And then I like to erase because there's really no category here in this little box. So again, it's always about winning and losing. And it's the dollar amount you would win or lose and the probability of winning and losing. Okay, so we do know we make a $5 bet. So if we lose, we lose that money just like before. So it's going to be a negative $5. But if we win, we win $175. But we really don't win all of it, right? Because I put in on some of that, right? I put in $5. So I really profited $170. Okay, so the probability of winning, though, is there's 38 numbers in roulette. So the each num each area has a one number on it and the ball may land on that. So it's one out of 38 chance that it's going to land on that number, meaning there are 37 numbers on there that are not winners. 
So all we need to do is to find the expected value is to multiply each x or value times its probability. So 170 times 138 times negative $5 times 37 out of 38. So we do this in the calculator. We don't really try to do a lot <laughs> by ourselves. So 170 times 1 out of 38 plus negative 5 times 37 out of 38. Okay, and we always really want a decimal. When we know it's money, we want to round to the nearest cent. And so usually it is with money, so we'll be rounding to the nearest cent. So in this case, it is, um, we could see from the calculator, it's negative dollar sign point, and I'll round to the nearest cent, which is hundreds, so 39 cents. So notice that the player can expect to lose 39 cents for each $5 bet on a number, okay? If the player plays a thousand times, then the player can expect to lose one thousand times that, right? So, what if it's um, if they play a thousand times? That means they're spending five thousand dollars. I mean, it's thirty nine cents for every five dollar bet. So, it's going to be um, thirty nine cents times a thousand, which is going to be a loss of. Tens, hundreds, not three hundred and ninety dollars. There, like that. So we can find the expected value by just doing a little arithmetic, but then we have to think about what it really means to us. And this is a real game. If you went to Vegas or Pachanga Casino, this is a real game. So you can expect if you go and bet on a number on roulette at a casino and you bet five dollars, you can expect already to lose thirty nine cents for that five dollar bet. So it's closer to zero than this one for fair game, right? Because it's fair game if it's close to zero or at zero. This is really, you're just losing out on that raffle ticket for sure. But this one, you it looks like it's getting closer to fair game. So it kind of lures you into play. <laughs> the last example is um, like life insurance. So... A 40-year-old man in the U.S. has a 0.242% risk of dying in the next year. An insurance company charges $275 for life insurance, and it pays a $100,000 death benefit. What is the expected value for the person buying the insurance? So here, notice it's not to the company, but to us. So the red flag would be to the person with insurance. Okay, so here, if I do the header here, and here are, things are going to be just a little different because it's not about winning and losing, it's about dying and living, right? So either the person lives or they die. And it's always like how much money and the probability of living or dying, <laughs> which is sometimes sad. <laughs> Okay, so here, how much, so let's just do one year. So one um, person will pay two seventy five dollars for, for life insurance policy. Um, and that means if they live through that next year, they just pay two seventy five dollars for that policy, so they lost it, right? So if they live, that means they lost out on $275. Okay, but if they die, the beneficiary will get $100,000, but not really, right? Because that year, that person paid two seventy-five, dollars So that means that the person really 
the beneficiary really did gain 100,000 minus the 275. So that would be if they die, the beneficiary would get 99,725 dollars because you have to subtract that money that man paid. The probability of dying is 0.242%. So that means that the probability of dying would be 0.00242, which means that the probability of living would just be one minus that. So one minus 0.00242. So it'll be 0.99758. So we could go ahead and see, um, multiply each and then add them up to see the expected value of buying life insurance. So the expected value would be negative 275 times 0.99758 plus 99725 times point zero zero two four two. So we'll go ahead and put that in the calculator. So negative two seventy five times point nine nine seven five eight plus ninety nine two seven two five times point zero zero two four two negative thirty three dollars <laughs> so um okay let me go ahead and write this out before I yeah okay so a man can expect a loss of $33 for each um in like you know insurance policy so um it's not just a man it's a 40 year old man right so a 40 year old man can expect a loss of $33. That is a lot. What do you think's happening here? Right? Because like, think about it. If you pay for a life insurance policy and your expected loss is already $33, that means that already the insurance company is profiting. And in fact, if we did it in terms of the insurance company, we would see that if a person lives, they would gain 275. And if a person dies, they would lose the 99,000. So if I redid this as um, second, or let me see, let me go up. Let's redo it is in the perspective of the insurance company. So the insurance company will gain 275 even if the person lives, right, almost 100%. And if the person dies, then they have to pay out, right? So they lose the $99,725. So they gain $33. So they gain $33 and they have easily like a million customers. Like that's such easy money to sell the profit. So, I mean, to sell the insurance. So we have to think about when these life insurance, you know, I even have life insurance and I know I, I do math. I do this for a living. So I already know that I'm always just giving my money away. But you know what? Just having the reassurance that my family will be OK if something should happen to me is really important. And it puts me at ease of mind more so than saving the money. So at least you're now when you go into a job and they say we have this life insurance, you know what? Feel free to go to the um, open data portal and look up for your age, your expect expectancy to live or die and calculate the expected value. See how much those companies, how much is it a loss to you? Because you may get a better deal where this loss isn't so high, right? It could be maybe negative 10, right? Let less. So it's not as expensive for you. But um, at, at least now you under kind of understand the gambling and the how you the expected 
what you can expect when you go out and do gambling or a raffle ticket or insurance. <laughs> okay.